I love 50 spaceships. I have pictures on my wall. I just adore them. And I've had this model on the side printed already for, ooh, what can I say, about a year? This was the perfect project to use it in. You don't need a lot of bits to make a good diorama. I started off with a picture frame. It's one of my favorite bases, but I'm actually using it as a picture frame this time. I'm gonna use this socket and the LEDs to light it. I've got my 3D print I did ages ago. I've got a picture I got off the internet and I've got the mini spaceman. Oh, still so cute. Oh. I'm going to glue that starry night onto my glass, but I want to light it from behind. So I took my picture frame apart and then used the glass as a template to see which bit of the picture I wanted to cut out. Once I got my picture, I needed to make those stars just a little bit brighter. So I decided to do that by making holes. I tried using the tip of an X-Acto blade on the bigger ones. Um, it wasn't actually ideal, so I moved on to plan B, a pin with some craft foam underneath. This worked amazingly well, and I just spent the next hour or two happily making holes in a bit of paper. I still needed a way to power my LED strips, and I had these little sockets there for a 12 volt plug. I tend to use the same 12 volt power for everything, so I just install these and I can use it as a frame on its own, or I can add the power and light it up. I drilled through the frame. Thankfully it was MDF, so it was quite easy to drill through. It didn't melt like the plastic will. And once I was through, I colored the exposed MDF with matte black paint. The frame covers the edges, so I made sure I traced where I could safely put the LEDs, and then I cut my LED strips to size. You have to cut on the marked um, locations. You can cut them with a pair of scissors, it's very simple, but if you cut somewhere else, the electric circuit won't work. These are sticky plastic backed, so I can just peel. I say just, this is probably one of the hardest things there is, is getting these backings off. But I could just peel these off and stick my LED strips in place. I test fit where everything's gonna go, especially the plug, as you're turning it around, because you're often putting it in from the back, but working from the front. And then I just cut my wires to size, strip the ends using my parrot cutters, twisted them up, put them on a little bit of flux. I like using a separate flux. I know somebody will write and tell me I should use rosin core. I prefer this, I can control the flux, I can control where the solder goes. And then once I've done that, I do the same on all of the contact strips on the LEDs, solder them all in place, pre-tin everything and solder. That's my top tip. Once I've screwed the wires in place, I can just plug it all in and do a test. Yay! Lighting! I printed this on thin copy paper and glued it in place with just an office glue stick. It's acid free so it won't yellow over time, but it will create absolute panic when you put your paper on because the paper's very thin and it will wrinkle. Not to worry, it will straighten out as it dries. That's what I told myself and thankfully I was right. So I just put everything together and I used some plate packing material. This is what you use when you move house and you put a sheet between each of your plates. It's great for diffusing LEDs and it's relatively cheap. You can buy it hundreds of sheets at a time. I cut a little hole out for the plug socket to go and memo to self, next time glue plug socket in place. I had to come back a few days later and glue it because I'd forgotten and it kept popping out every time I tried to put the um, actual electric in. So once it was together, I just folded the tabs back down and left it. There we are, done, finished. Well, I still need to put my spaceship on there. I found this spaceship design on Thingiverse years ago. I've been looking for the perfect diorama for it. And I did print this out probably a couple of years ago on my Anycubic Photon and it's been sat on the side. And I'd snipped the supports and cured it, but done nothing more. So I went through and did an initial pass. I don't find clear resin. I love printing with it. Um, it's great to see stuff left in the bottom of the vat, but I struggle to see everything to clean up. So I went through and I just cleaned all the visible nubs that I could find, put some putty on, waited for it to dry, and then filed that again. I'm just using small metal files, you know, you get sets of these all the place like Amazon. And then I wanted to hold it and mount it, so I used 
five minute epoxy and just glued a florist wire, quite a thick one, so it would hold the weight and put it on the side to set up. It only takes five minutes. When that was done, I could put super glue on and just glue that little top piece in place. Then it was on to painting. Give it a good wash, wait for it to dry, and then I used all clad micro filler primer. Now I've not used this before and the aim is that you fill with it and it fills all the little gaps. What I do find though is when you've put a primer on and you come and look, you will find loads of areas where you miss nubs or your putty wasn't quite as smooth as it could have been. So I spent another amount of time tidying all that up. There's a reason there's a slogan for 3D printing, which is, I sand, I die, I sand again. You know, it really is a lot of sanding in various iterations, especially if you're doing a metallic finish. What I didn't do and I should have done is sand some of the layer lines. So especially on one of the portholes, and you might see it if you spot it on the final photos, you can really clearly see the print layers. They're only 25 microns or 50 microns. And each time you come off a layer, you get a slight stagger and you can't stop that. That is part of the printing process. So you will either need to file it or just live with it. I should have filed it and I didn't. Oops. Rinse those off again, wait for it to dry, and then onto the final paint coats. First up, a gloss black. This is all clad gloss black, and all metallics go on better with a nice glossy finish. You leave it to dry for about half an hour once you've got that coat on. You can speed it up with a hairdryer, and then I put on spectral holographic chrome. It has that beautiful rainbow effect around the lights. It's absolutely beautiful and um, I really 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 wanted to use that effect on something and this spaceship was it. Great. I went over it then a day later actually to let everything go off with an aqua gloss which is their clear coat. Now a key part of this diorama is the mini spaceman. It's the massive voodoo challenge and you just put a mini spaceman on anywhere that you like. You get the mini spaceman as little resin castings from Mr Lee's minis. However, this is my third video I've done on these mini spacemen, and I don't feel any need whatsoever to put you through me painting a little mini spaceman again. So here we are, here's the painting montage as I go through really quickly. If you want to know the details of what I did, I've done two previous videos and you can go and see the details on either of those, rainbows and deserts. And it's exactly the same. I painted all three at the same time. Now the only difference has been how I fit them into the scenes. So for this one, I added some white dots as stars under the clear Tamiya coat right on the end of the visor so that you would see some kind of reflection on them. And now we have all the ingredients. We just need to put them together for the final diorama. So first up, my mini spaceman needs to be mounted onto the rocket ship somehow. And I want him to float on a tether. So I drilled a hole and then I got a bonsai wire. It's very easy to twist, which is why I use it. And I twist it into a really contorted sort of shape. But, you know, there's no gravity, so it could be any shape at all. And I sprayed it with a white primer. When it was dry, I glued it in place using a mix of super glue and five minute epoxy. The five minute epoxy is much stronger, but the super glue will set instantly with a zapper. I drilled a hole in the frame to mount the rocket ship and I bent the wire into a little right angle and then into a slight arcing curve and I worked out where it would need to be to be in the centre. I used five minute epoxy and then just wedged it in place until it had all set up. And at the very last, I put my mini spaceman in place. I used super glue and a squirt of zapper on the mini spaceman. When you touch the two together, he grips almost instantly. Finally, I painted black, matte black Tamiya paint on that little wire to try and make it disappear. And I was done. So this is the last of my mini spaceman dioramas. For those of you who want me to get back to railway modeling, don't worry, that's next. But these have been great fun and a little bit different. And it's good to try techniques such as metal painting and some of the other things that I've been doing. So this was only quick, 
but was definitely fun. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, hit the bell button, pop over to Patreon, buy a t-shirt, look at my website. You know the drill. Anyway, see you next time.